episode of the Tommy Williams Show. Um, your host, Tommy Williams, I'm here for another fantastic episode. Today's going to be a little bit different. Last time we met, um, for the first time, um, I kind of gave a rundown on what to expect when we go into our show. Um, main emphasis, again, is COVID right now. That's the, um, that's the big thing going on right now. That's the pandemic. We can't dodge it. We're all masked up, hopefully, and um, following the CDC. Uh, CDC guidelines. Um, so I want to make sure that um, you all are strapped in and ready to go and also paying close attention because what I have planned tonight is um, I have a couple of guests coming on. I have just average people. I told you that I was going to have average people are definitely that my market that I'm trying to hit because I'm an average person myself. Um, I'm a consumer, so I go to the store. I, I, I have to go outside of the house, so I consider myself definitely a frontline or essential worker because my household depends on my going out and making decisions that could save our lives. Um, so my first guest, actually, um, his name is Maurice, and uh, he'll be coming on. Uh, he's going to um, – actually, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself as well. Um, it's actually a friend of mine, and um, you know he actually had uh, COVID, and it was uh, not welcomed, but it came into his household. And so we're going to have a discussion together, and hopefully you all can um, you know listen up, and uh, and also um, we're going to have a time when I go live, and I'd love to know what your responses are because um, I know that you all are essentially doing what you need to do each day, and I'd love to have you on my show as well. As well, I'd love to promote some different things that you might be doing to um, prevent the symptoms or reduce the symptoms through COVID. Um, so we can teach one another, and also um, I can learn as well through the process. Um, also, we're gonna be uh, talking about health and wellness um, to prevent COVID, because the healthier you are, the more we can combat and thwart off the virus from settling in. Um, so away we go. First guest will be Maurice. We have uh, Maurice here. Maurice is uh, in New Jersey. Maurice uh, is actually a friend of mine from college. And um, sad to say, Maurice and I, well, Maurice and I have had um, very engaging conversations, you know, all the while since college, which was many, many moons ago, but that's a whole other sub subject. Um, this evening, we're going to talk about COVID. And you know, uh, Maurice actually um, had informed me through his uh, relationship and his mom's relationship with COVID um, about COVID. And I was one of those people who was a little bit like uh, aloof as to what took place. And um, we're going to have a discussion now about the relationship that Maurice has had with COVID. I'll drop dip in with my relationship with COVID. And we're going to start um, our conversation now. Maurice, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So, Maurice, um, you had how, tell me how you um, had uh, contracted or how the virus hit you um, and your family. Mm. Did it hit you first, or how did it happen? Well, it was interesting because uh, I remember very vividly when they were saying that a couple of weeks before April 12th, they were saying by April 12th, a hundred thousand people would have contracted the virus. So in my head, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be one of those people. Sadly enough, uh, I contracted, I, I, I caught it on the 9th of April, a few days right before that. And so what had happened was I didn't really know if I had it, had it or not. Um, I had a cough, you know, one night. I had a, a building cough one night. Uh, and then uh, I went to sleep. Like there was a Friday, Friday, 2 o'clock in the morning. I woke up, felt like I was beat on by 10 different people from head to toe. I had to cough. And uh, some of my friends, uh, Ron Brown, some other folks who are in the medical field, you know, I called them and they were advising me as to what to do uh, because they said, well, we're not sure if you, you have it yet. And they said, well, the, the sore or the soreness, you know, the aching from head to toe, maybe. And so he asked me, and I never thought of it, I don't know why. He asked me, he said, well, go take the temperature. And so I had a fever. So it was a fever, uh, and then I started to get a headache. Then it was the, my body just was aching from head to toe. And, uh, you know, I went to sleep on a Friday. I woke up 2 o'clock in the morning, probably Friday morning, and those were the symptoms. 
And I woke up two, three o'clock in the morning, Monday morning, and just like that, it was all gone. But for those wow. three days, I was down. For those three days, there was just rest, uh, drinking some so, fluid. Yeah, so tell me this. So, so again, and you hear as I do a little cough, there's remnants of COVID as well, and we'll touch up on that as well. Um, but my introduction was a little different because um, I didn't have, did you have a temperature as well? Yeah, I, I had a temperature, not at first, but because I didn't pay attention to the temperature because I would take some Tylenol and the temperature went down. Okay. So I was just like, oh, okay, you know, maybe normal cold. I didn't pay anything. Yeah. I, I didn't pay any attention to it because I never get sick. I mean, you know yeah, that. I, uh, yeah, I and, and you know what? It's, a, it's actually a, um, a mild time of the year. You're talking about the spring, right? Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so this, um, this all happened. And like you said, and I think, you know, uh, the majority of the people that I've spoken with, um, they've been telling me that, you know, the primary symptom is the cough, the subtle cough. And, um, and that's exactly what, uh, what hit me first. And uh, actually, I learned from you about the uh, asymptomatic, you know, where you were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, different mm -hmm. symptoms that you may have, you may not have, and um, it affects everybody differently. So it wasn't until I contracted it, um, where he says, you know, that um, my, I didn't have a temperature. And so I guess um, I would be deemed a super spreader because, you know, I was just welcome to every place I went because, you know, well, you know, you don't have a temperature, come on in. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so um, some people had gotten from me um, and I didn't know, I didn't, I wasn't tested at the time. And I, again, a lot of times you could walk around nowadays, you know, now it's getting a little more deeper because we're going further into the innings with it. Um, but early on, you know, I think that a lot of people were just negligent, you know, thinking, you know, okay, well, it's just a cough or it's just, you know, a little, little headache I have, you know, maybe it's something, maybe it's I, I need sleep or I need to eat something. Um, and just kind of self-diagnosing along the way. But now mm -hmm. with these numbers, you can't look away from the big picture, which is it may be COVID. Um, so again, you know, you got it early on, the springtime that, yeah, you're right. I mean, there, you know, a lot of things, the, even the government, the politics, not, there, was, there wasn't a lot of emphasis on, you know, what was going on and things. They were still trying to figure it out. So, um, so okay, so beyond your, your getting it and things, what happened? Um, what so what kind of... Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, so, so here's the thing, though. I never got tested until my mother had it. So I had gotcha. it, mm -hmm. and it was gone. And whatever it was, I was just like, I didn't think it was that because it was gone in three days. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, it's gone. And so uh, my mother started getting lethargic. She she wouldn't eat. Um, she didn't have any energy. And after two days of that, you know, I took her to the emergency room, and they were like. Well, well, she has COVID. And I was like, oh, snap. Then let me go get tested. I got tested and I had it, but I hadn't had any more symptoms since uh, the three days that I had it. And so uh, uh, it was really interesting because uh, also, uh, you know, my aunt and my uncle, uh, we all reside together. And they had what's called COVID pneumonia. And so the interesting thing to me, uh, what I, my version of it, it that, that's what it was. And my mother's version of it was totally different from theirs, but they share a same part of the home. And so uh, we're in different parts of the home and I guess they're closer to each other in the home. So I guess that's why they had the same thing, COVID pneumonia, as they called it, because my mother never had COVID pneumonia. Uh, in actuality, she would have been released that night except for uh, COVID had affected her blood flow. And so gotcha. they didn't know she had blood clots. And mm -hmm. so they kept her and kept testing her because they didn't know, you know, if she had blood clots or not. And then they realized that it was COVID that had affected her blood flow. So with regard to the blood flow, is that, um, was anything um, spiked up uh, with regard to oxygen levels? Yeah, so, so what happens is I, I normally check her oxidation um, mm -hmm. I have an oximeter and I normally check her blood pressure. So over the two days, um, it was, it was, it was okay over the two yeah. days. Um, and then on the second day, you know, her blood pressure went up. Like her blood pressure, like all the great, like 117 over 62 or something like that. But that went up and her oxygen went down. Um, mm -hmm. And and I was like, well, okay, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it for me. She started eating again that mm -hmm. morning, but I had already decided I was going to take her in. 
And, and the interesting thing is by the time I got her to the emergency room, she was slumped over in the chair. It was like, and so, uh, yeah, man, um, there's a lot of different variations of it. Um, some people are asymptomatic, as, as you know. And one thing I learned uh, through the, all the research, the asymptomatic people who could be super spreaders, of course, but the people who were asymptomatic in their 20s were having strokes. Mm. And they said they were having strokes because they would have blood clots in their feet or ankle area, but they never knew it. And so I guess through research and all of that, they realized they related the the whole asymptomatic thing to the uh, to the blood clots and the stroke. So it was kind of scary, man. Uh, one thing I wanted to I wanted to mention um, because when you and I talked, I was still bummed out that the, about you telling me you know your condition when you caught it. Like you know you're, you're a very well conditioned uh, young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> that's what that's what made me uh, really you know take on to take on this uh, platform here because you know. I, uh, it, it definitely, you know, just on this show, Maurice, I'm telling you, and we, we, we you know, this is great. I'm fanta fantastic conversation, but so many people can relate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because the mental, the mental health that goes along with this, even without catching COVID, you're this already type quarantining because you can't do everything. Places are closed. You know, places are closed. Life has changed. So now, of course, you know, so you're inside, you're dealing with just the stress of not being able to live a, a normal life. You know, the economy shifted. Mm -hmm. Everything is different. So how does that affect you? Well, for me, uh, one thing, let me, let me add this on because this was very interesting. Like, you, you know me, I'm a gym rat such as yourself. You know, I went 25 days without doing anything any kind of workout or anything and it's not like i didn't try you know we've been in this game for, for a long long time and, and we use the workout for a stress reliever all sorts of things so we can push ourselves to do something you know do mm -hmm. some kind of workout under every condition i couldn't do it for 25 days and in hindsight i realized even though i didn't have any more symptoms it it has it had affected me mentally I couldn't work out. No matter how, how many days I said, well, I'm, I'm going to get out there, I'm going to do it. I never could push myself, and I didn't understand why I couldn't because I hadn't worked out. Listen, I was probably, I don't know, in my teen years before I hadn't done anything athletic for like 25 days. And so I want to stress that uh, the mental aspect of it, and you don't know that that's what's doing it until hindsight teaches you like, oh, it must have been that. It, it it had to be that, yeah. And so, because, uh, and, and with that, because you walked away from COVID, did you feel like you had any any um, remaining symptoms or anything like that, or did you was everything pretty much gone? Did you have how about your wind? Did you sacrifice your your lung capacity, your breathing? Was it was it intact going through COVID, or did you have any issues with? COVID? Yeah, everything was like I said. Only thing I had was the was the physical physical like the beatdown. I felt sore from head to toe. I ache from head to toe. Other than that, nothing, nothing else affected me uh, mm -hmm. besides the mental aspect. I told you, but, oh, listen, I, I did lose weight. I, I did drop about yeah. 12 pounds and I didn't okay. realize I had, mm -hmm. I, I did drop about 12. Did you, did you, um, was one of the symptoms diarrhea? Did you have diarrhea along with the No, symptoms? no, no. That, so yeah. that's why, that's why I didn't, I didn't know. And I, I, I didn't think about having that because I had only had those, and if it weren't for my friends in the medical field who said, well, you know what, Rags, you know what, that, mm -hmm. that aching from head to toe, you know, one of my, you know, one of my people, you know, they, mm -hmm. they had that, and, and, yeah. and she had COVID, so I was like, oh, well, maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. So now, how long has it been since you've been uh, free from COVID? Oh, wow. And so we, we uh, April 9th is when I got tested. I got retested the end of June. Okay. And, and here, here's the interesting thing. So my household got retested around that time. Mm -hmm. Everyone tested negative except for my aunt. Now, by this time, she's back, you know, they had opened up everything. So she's back at work, you know, doing her, she's back at work almost two weeks. She never had any other symptoms for the longest. 
And so if she's back at work, when she comes back and says, you know, my test says I'm, <laughs> I'm positive, she was like, <laughs> you know, but my, my, uh, my, my doctor said that little particles in your body yes. could still yeah. give you that positive, That's right. uh, 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 that positive result, but you're good. And mm-hmm. so, you know, they're still looking at everything. Man. Yeah. A lot of times that's why people, um, they test positive and they want them to get a, a series of tests, you know, for us to, mm-hmm. to make sure. Um, and then from the doctor to the medical standpoint, I was told um, that the antibodies are beefed up beyond COVID and that you have a timeline. But how do you feel about that? Do you feel like okay, you can so rely on that or what's No, what's so, so when, they, when, when they came out with the antibody uh, mm-hmm. test that you could take, I, I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't feeling it too much. I thought it was a little early, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And so I talked to my doctor. My doctor said, well, you can go ahead and get it. He said, but don't place, don't, don't, don't place any emphasis on if it comes back positive that you have the antibodies, don't think about it. If it comes back negative, don't think about it. He said, because those tests that they they were doing at the time, he said, you know, they're really not, we, we're really not sure what they're actually measuring. And so uh, I didn't get the test because it wasn't going to mean anything if I got it. But uh, the latest thing that I heard is that, yeah, first of all, I was out of my mind when they said you could catch it again in the early stages because I, I felt like I was sad that I caught it early. But I was like, okay, so now we're good for the whole duration. You know, we're good. You know, no worries. Right. And then I found out that you could catch it again. And then I found out uh, probably a month or so ago that the antibodies that you have after about four months may start to wear off and yeah. go away. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> right, right. Well, that's, um, that's a whole bunch to be concerned about and, 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 and definitely lose sleep about each night because, mm-hmm. you know, when you have a family there and relying on your better judgment and things, and like I said, you know, everybody is an essential worker. You know, everybody who has to leave the house to do something to provide for their home to, you know, to just function each day, Mm -hmm. even though we're limited on our functionality, uh, being Mm -hmm. that we're supposed to be quarantining, um, you know, and now we're going through this wave. um, There's no telling what's in sight. So what would be your um, what would be your advice for those people who are out there um, that say, you know, "Ah, I don't know if I should wear, you know, I would wear my mask, but you know, it may not happen to me or it may not really hit me hard. Now you didn't, it didn't hit you that hard, but you still have a, uh, a definite respect and a concern about this virus, I would imagine, don't you? Well, well, well so, so you asked me, what would I say to the people in the supermarket going down the aisle the wrong way? Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the, people, the people saying, my friend, it don't, don't believe it, those people. <laughs> and then I tell them I had it and they go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, listen, man. You know, the power of belief is everything. And depending on who you're listening to and who you believe, that's going to dictate what you do. And uh, the only thing I would say, until it hits home, a lot of people are not going to do what they're supposed to do. You know, and so unless they're mandates, you know, government mandates, uh, workplace, they already have the mandates. You can't come in here without, you know, getting getting your feet, getting your uh temperature checked or wearing a mask. Um, you know, I, I just feel like it's not a, we, I, I can say it's not a political thing, but it is. Because people are siding with whoever their politician is on this thing. And that's a scary thing. It's like, okay, so I believe in And there's so many stories, as you know, about people who believe that the mask was, that the whole thing was a hoax, this, that, and the other. And they actually die from it, or a family yeah. member die from it yeah. before they can believe that this is this is real. So, sure. um, I don't know. What but I think I, that I think that essentially, the 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 whole thing is like the spaceship. You know, hey, the people are coming from space. The point is that once the spaceship lands, it's here now. So, what are you going to do about it? So, I think at this point, we just need to all like um, unify. Like you say, we all need to unify. Blue mm-hmm. states, red states, how you feel, political parties, gender, race, preference. We all just need to get together and let the researchers finish up their process on getting the virus to cure. Um, but I, I think it's gonna take it's gonna take humanity, it's gonna take humans as people to um, yeah. to be able to follow along 
simple rules. We follow rules all of our lives. All it the doesn't time. Stop now. And this is all the, the rule to keep us alive. And um, I, I'm so glad that I've had an opportunity to have you all, Maurice. I think Appreciate that, you know, we definitely um, got a chance to, to, you know, wake some people up maybe to, to maybe um, bring awareness to some misconceptions that we, they might have had with uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, all around, it's been a great conversation. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And thanks for coming on the Tommy Williams Show, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You got it, buddy. You take care <laughs> and God bless you. And stay safe right. and keep <laughs> that mask on. Keep, keep pushing, man. And aisle one means this way. You tell those people to turn around, man. Back that train I'm up. Very, I'm very vocal. I I'm, know you are, I'm man. I'm scarily vocal. <laughs> stay vigilant, man. We need you. Times, times a million. You. All right, buddy. Appreciate you, man. All right, buddy. Appreciate take you. Take care. All right. And welcome back to the Tommy Williams Show. Thank you so much, everybody. Today, um, again, we also have a second guest. We have Katie, and Katie is in uh, Staten Island, New York, where she is uh, a shop owner. And also, um, she has her experience with COVID as well. Um, Katie, wants to tell us a little something about yourself and your shop, what's the name? Okay, it's um, called Everything Goes Book Cafe. It's, uh, we sell used, but we're the only used bookstore in Staten Island, so we have really great selection. And we also are cafe, so we have really excellent coffee and tea. We sell organic coffee and about 30 different teas, and we sell snacks. Mm. Before COVID, we were also a performance space. We, we'd had uh, events every week where people would perform, and we had meeting. We had a lot going on. Now everything is simplified you know yeah. modified and mm -hmm. and and just simplified and yeah few we're open fewer hours and we're not doing as many things we made everything more spacious and we don't have indoor seating although we could if we followed all the rules that you have to follow in new york city but we don't have a big menu and our focus is really on books so we have outdoor seating and and it's and it our our backyard garden is very charming, so people love that. And if they, but if you know they want to be in the thick of things, they can be out on the front sidewalk where there's quite a bit of activity. We're mm -hmm. a, a walk from the Staten Island Ferry is free from Manhattan, so and it our place is about a 12 minute walk from the ferry. Wow! So nice. we get a lot of tourists, but really that's. Almost, mm -hmm. That's minimal right now. Yeah, yeah, I could see how it would definitely be prime, prime spot. You, you know, big visions. You had, you've had history. It sounds like with, um, with good days and everything flourishing yeah. there. It sounds like a great backdrop. I mean, you know, with, with books and and having a literary, you know, theme, and then you know, welcoming right. in different teas from different places. You said you have, um, so they're exo not exotic teas, but from different locations, right? Uh, or do you have right. uh, from around the world? This but yeah, we've been open here 15 years as a, mm -hmm. and we, our full name was Everything Goes Book Cafe and Neighborhood Stage. But right now the neighborhood stage is on hold mm -hmm. for the time being, and we'll see what happens next year. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we'll remain optimistic. Right. And um, for now, it's just about educating people so the people in charge or the people that we need to be in charge, the researchers, can go ahead and do their job and get us out of this pit that yeah. we're in. So, um, so fantastic. So you had um, contracted the virus, I, I remember you saying last spring, last March, right? Yes. So, so how did that go for you? I know that was kind of early on before, you know, they had all these guidelines yeah. and things and, and, you know, and all these things mandated. So what was that like for you? It was, it was a shock because we had, we had just closed the book cafe because we figured we weren't really essential and we, we anyway. The day after we closed, I was feeling fine in the morning and making breakfast. And by the afternoon, I started feeling not so good. And I, you know, achy and feverish and cough. So I went right to bed. And, you know, I really took care of myself. I drank lots of fluids and herbal tea and vitamin C. And, you know, I use essential oils to stay, you know, help reduced my cough and mm -hmm. I just rested. So then after yeah. about 15 days, I, I had been symptom, three, symptom free for three days, meaning I had no fever. So I thought I was okay. So then I, I went, but in the 15 days I was quarantined in my room, I, I share a house with people. So people were bringing me food 
but I was quarantined and uh, I didn't go out. Except, I mean, I went out to get fresh air, but I didn't mingle. Um, and then after the 15 days, I thought I was better. I went out on a, for a bike ride and I went, started doing some gardening and physical work. And then after three days, my symptoms came back. Mm, wow. Headaches and a fever, not a high fever, but occasionally a high fever, mostly just a low fever. And, and so I went back to my quarantining for another two weeks, went back to bed and rested a lot. And, uh, so let me ask you, you know, you, so your, your symptoms reverted, but you, they, came, they came back. So when they came yeah. back, did you, get, did you get retested between the time that they, they had left and you were cycling and doing oh, things like that? No. I actually, when did I get tested? I think I got tested with, on the second. It, it was harder to get tests at that time. Um, and it was hard to get an appointment. But, but I think I got tested during the second two weeks. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and first I, and then they said that it was negative, but then I got a call from the health department and, um, they said it was positive. So, which made more sense. Yeah. So because you were feeling the symptoms. Confirmed what I already thought I had all the classic symptoms. I'd even lost my sense of smell, which I didn't know that, you know, even before I got sick. Yeah. But, um, so when they called me and said, you know, asked me a lot of questions and told me, I had a positive test. I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. Later, after I was recovered, I went and got tested again. I got tested for the antibodies and for the virus, and I was negative for the virus and positive for the antibodies. So it all, it was typical, I guess, of what most people get, you know, if you, yeah. afterwards you have the antibodies, but then you don't know how long they protect you and all that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Right, right. Yeah, we were talking about it. I was talking, Maurice. Um, and, you know, they, they say the medical staff or the medical field, they say four months. But um, again, you know, what's proven right now? We, we really don't we really don't know. We could look at a population. But I mean, you know, unless unless we just let it run and run and run and run, we're really not going to get uh, solid data. Yeah. So, you I'm, know, I'm, um, assuming I, I'm assuming I could get it again, even though I know it's highly unlikely. So, you know, I wear a mask like everybody else in New York or not everybody. Fantastic. But yeah. Yeah. But what I didn't tell you about when I when the, our when my store was closed, I was working for uh, Grow NYC in the green market system. Mm -hmm. Grow NYC runs all the green markets uh, throughout five boroughs in New York City, which is a way of bringing fresh food from local farmers into the city. Um, some people call them farmer's markets. In, in New York, we call it green market. But um, so I was working part-time during the months that our store was closed. I was doing this job called COVID support, which means you're helping manage the crowd at the green market. You're helping, you know, maintain social distancing and helping people, you know, basically reminding people they have to wear a mask. And so I was out in the city, different places in the city, mostly actually Brooklyn and Staten Island, doing the job of <laughs> enforcing the rules, basically. Uh, or right. not enforcing because I didn't have a, you know, any real power, but, right. you know, reminding people and asking and requesting the people you know, follow the rules that will protect other people. Right. And it was, you know, it was fascinating how different people react to those requests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, and it's, and it's not, it's not all good, you know, right? right? It's not all yeah. good. Um, you know, and how do you feel about, you know, the, the police being able to sanction, right? To sanction um, mm -hmm. tickets and violations for those people who aren't um, wearing it or following think, the CDC. I don't know violence. if they are, are, I don't, I'm not aware of it. I did see months ago, earlier in the summer, there was some tickets going of, on and violate. Yeah, there was some police yeah. that weren't even wearing masks themselves who were yep. really out of, you know, seemed disproportionately uh, targeting people, minorities. Yeah. And that was very disturbing. I think they kind of, they backed off. I mean, the whole summer was so intense in so many ways here yes. Yes. in the city. Um, but that was one thing 
I mean, in my neighborhood, I didn't see any enforcement of a of a, a kind like that. Nothing. Do you nothing. think? That it would help. Do you think that it would help at this time? The numbers being spiked and things of that nature. Or is... I don't know. I I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, the health department. When we since we reopened, the health department has visited us. Okay. Good. They visited. I I don't know how they visited every business on our block, but they did visit us to say, um, you know, to see if we were following protocols for uh, social distancing and sanitizing. You know, they were. They would basically coming to make sure we were following the recommendations or yeah. the regulations, I should say, uh, yeah. for businesses being open in New York City. Mm -hmm. But, you know, fortunately, <laughs> we were, so yeah. I was, yeah. I, they, were, they were very nice. They weren't, they weren't, you know. They just had, were doing their job just to make sure that you were compliant. That's, right. that's it. I mean, you I, know, that's, that's what everybody, I think everybody has a role. And some yeah. people have multiple roles, but I think one one common role that we all have is just to maintain safety for 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 ourselves right. and one another. So, um, you know, Katie, I'll tell you, you know, this 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 whole thing is really um, it's really escalated, and it's like a a tunnel that you, you really don't know when we're going to come out. You know, you hear about the um, the cure and things, and uh, you know, you know, you have big hopes for everything, but uh, again, because it's not going to just hit everybody at the same time. It's not going to, everybody's not going to get the cure at the same time. It's going to scaffold from the medical workers and then it's going to, you know, yeah. go into, you know, other people that they deem essential. So, yeah. um, well, I, you know, I know that, you know, things definitely aren't difficult up there. Um, you know, I, I, I do miss the seasons changing. I'm from the Northeast as well. It's so refreshing to see a person with a hat and scarf on and stuff. It's like you dressed up for the occasion. I'm so jelly right now, you know? Uh -huh. I was actually, because it's obnoxious down here in South Florida. Oh. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's chilly enough for you to have to wear something. But then, you know, with, with the, and, it, and it's strange because even with, like now, you know, it is flu season. Have you gotten a flu shot? Me? Uh, can you no. do that? Yeah. I, um, I, it's, I'm over 60, so they, they do recommend it, but I haven't, I've never gotten it yet, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Probably, Nora. maybe I will this year. Yeah. It makes sense just to, yeah, yeah I probably yeah. will. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're yeah, nice I'm and bundled up. You. I'm jealous of you. I had some friends who had gone down to Florida, and they drove down to the Keys, and I was looking at the temperatures, and I was like, oh, yeah. oh I wish I was yeah. with them. But right now, I wish that it would get very cold and turn people off from going out because what's happening is, you know, people come down here wanting to just vacation and, you know, let their hair down. And it's like, no, you can't do it. And that's why the numbers end up, you know, going up down here in South Florida because people want to reprieve from what they're doing and they come here and You're that's right. when they, that's when the they get it. So. But, you know, I want to wish you all the best with your shop. Thank I want you to you. give one more plug. I, I want to jot down the name. It's such a, a neat little name. I especially like it with, with the name, with word books in there because I love reading. And, uh, you know, next time I come up, I'm going to yeah. definitely have to visit the shop. Um, Please but go come ahead and visit. And, Please yes. come. Certainly will. And the name of the shop again is? Everything Goes Book Cafe. And located? Everything Goes Book Cafe. Located on Bay Street in Staten Island, New York. Fantastic. Do you have yeah. a website for, for your for your shop? Yes, shopping? sure we do. Um, just etg, etgstores.com and then a backslash and then book cafe, book cafe, all one word. All right, if Katie. You Google, if you do a Google search for a used bookstore in Staten Island, we, we pop right up, you know. Super. We're, we're it. You heard Heard it, folks. They're it. Uh, <laughs> used bookstores in Staten Island. Beautiful place. With Especially a little backyard time. garden. We have a little garden oasis that yes. you can go and look for the gnomes and the fairies and the birds. Very Ceramic. nice. Very nice. And, and, and entertainment will be back. It'll be back on the rise, prayerfully. Okay. So. so, you know, take care. God bless. And, you know, um, stay safe. Okay. And thank you so much thank for taking you. the time out to talk about something so important right now oh, in the thank world. You. Thank you for the opportunity, Tommy. It's great You're to welcome. meet you. Sure, it's a pleasure. You take care. Bye, Bye Katie. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, folks, just uh, thank you very much for joining in, and I appreciate you all uh, sharing with us tonight uh, for, for the conversation with Maurice and also Katie, two very interesting topics uh, in tandem with COVID. 
and um, hopefully you learned a lot. I know I did. And it's, it's, a, it's definitely a time right now globally, I think, for everybody to just be in prayer, um, be unified, follow the CDC guidelines, and um, we'll have more information on COVID and nutrition and exercise and ways to uh, ward off this thing and stay healthy on the next Tommy Williams show. Thank you so much for joining in. Take care. Bye-bye. Now, glutathione is a big word, but it's the body's own master antioxidant. So it's a scavenger for free radicals, for bacteria, and what's relevant now, viruses. This is new to the marketplace. There's no other product on the market that has the ingredient NASET. And basically NASET increases the production of that glutathione that is in our body already to strengthen and, and enhance our, our immune system and keep it strong. Elevated sense of well-being. Supports muscle strength and endurance. Cognitive function. Powerful liver support. Energy. Helps blood sugar regulation. Superior bioavailability of key ingredients. One of your best defenses against COVID mm -hmm. is a strong immune system. Taking GSH Plus as a daily supplement does all that. And now we have the product out on the marketplace.